everyone. So today is super exciting and a first for Q&A with Lady K. I am joined by Canadian Olympic athlete, Felicia George. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. And I'm sure you all recognize her and her medal from the women's two men bobsleigh. Thank you so much for putting Canada on the podium. Thank you. No, it was an absolutely amazing experience. I'm so happy to win a medal for Canada. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember what you were thinking standing on that podium when you received the medal? Yeah, I was just so happy. Um, I actually feel like I was more emotional right after we finished racing. And it was like, oh my gosh, like we did it. Like we, we actually won and we like, you know, we won a medal. You know, all the years of all the hard work that you put in and then finally like, you you know, seeing the result that you want is just it feels so good and just like I said before just happy to win a medal like when you're over at the Olympics you literally feel like you have the whole country supporting you so that's just yes. an amazing feeling. Now a lot of us know you as a summer yes. Olympic athlete yes. so take us through the process how did you go from competing in the hurdles to bobsleigh? Yeah so funny enough right after the Rio Olympics I had a Twitter message from Kaylee Humphreys who was my pilot that I slid with and was like would you ever try bobsleigh and I was like I'd never in my wildest dreams thought about doing it, but like I like to challenge myself, I like to do new stuff. So I was like, all right, let's do it, let's try, yeah. What do you think it was that Kaylee saw in you and thought, you know, I want this girl on my team? So her coach also coached track and field. So they kind of saw me and thought I would have potential. Um, I'm fast, obviously, which makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm a, I had a, a frame, like, cause I have, I'm tall and I have yeah. long legs, I cover a lot of ground. Um, so I think she just saw the potential that, you know, I'm, I'm a tall athlete, I'm a fast athlete, and you know, you, I had to get a lot stronger. You put a little bit more strength on me, and then, you know, you get the result that we had. What kind of training did you go through for Pyeongchang? Yeah, I mean, six days a week um, of training, um, pushing sleds, obviously, yeah. um, a lot of weightlifting. I think that was the biggest difference from my track to, uh, to bobsled. Um, so I was just in the, in the weight room, like, a lot, um, getting a lot stronger, because the bobsled weighs 165 kilos, which is huge, and oh it's so heavy, gosh. yeah, so. And you have to push that. Right, and it's like you're basically going from zero to like, you know, you have to get it started. So yeah. it's on ice, but it, you still feel how heavy it is. So you got to get a lot stronger to be able to do that. What was Kaylee's involvement in your training process? Well, she was my training partner. Um, I think she was also a really great mentor. You know, I mean, obviously she's been doing bobsleigh way longer than I have. So she kind of taught me the ins and outs of bobsleigh. She was um, a great, um, in terms of the confidence that she had in me and the potential that she believed that I had. So I think to me, that just gave me more confidence because of that. And it really made me believe that I can, you know, make the team and not, not only make the team, but get on the podium with her yeah. yeah what was the best advice you received I think the biggest thing especially in bobsleigh as well is just focusing on yourself like you're there and you're on a team and you're comp you're competing against other girls to earn a spot on the sled there's only three sleds and that means there's only three spots to make the team so it's very competitive um, and you can't be comparing yourself to other people now were you able to bring any tools that you used in the hurdles and track to bobsleigh um, my speed, that was the biggest thing in my running technique. Um, I think when most people saw me initially, they're like, well, yep, yeah, she knows how to run. Like, you know, her technique looks good. Um, it was just learning how to push as opposed to just running behind the sled. Um, and my work ethic, bringing that and, you know, I know how to work. I know I've been to Olympics before. I know how to compete. I know how to compete hard. I know how to stay focused on myself. So, yeah. Was it challenging at all, though, breaking up your four-year training routine? Because normally you compete at the Olympics and then you have four years until the next games, right? Yeah. But this case, you're literally learning a whole new sport in less than two years. Right, yeah. Um, it was challenging for sure, but I think it was cool because now I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to have an Olympics every two years. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, because um, I'm actually now going to start preparing to go to Tokyo in 2020. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was challenging in some ways, but it was also like a good break in terms of uh, stepping away from the track and, and challenging myself in a new way. Now, as pusher and brakeman, what are your specific responsibilities when that bobsleigh is going down the track? Yeah, to win a bobsleigh race, the basic things are having a good start, have a good drive and have good equipment. Um, so the start is essential because bobsleigh is about hundredths of a second. Like you can literally lose by a hundredth, which is crazy. Um, so your start is essential. So my my job is to get the sled moving as fast as possible. When I'm in the sled, the main thing that I need to be doing is staying as still as possible um, so the driver can do her drive. And then the brakeman at the end, I'm pulling the brakes. Yeah. Is it hard? Like 
trying to stay as still as possible? Well, I mean, I'm literally folded over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to fill the slide, so I'm really trying to brace myself against the side of the walls. There is a lot of G-force and pressure that pushes down on you. There's literally been times when like, I'm in there and I feel like my helmet's gonna touch the bottom of the slide because there's G-forces pressing down on your body when you're in those big turns. But you get used to it. I, literally the first few times I was doing it, I was like, okay, why am I here? What am I doing? Well, I know it's a cliche question, but how does it feel to be an Olympic medalist? It's absolutely amazing. Um, dreamed of becoming an Olympian as a young girl. Yeah. So one, to make the Olympics is huge. And then to actually get on the podium, it literally a dream come true. Do you have any advice for young girls out there who want to make it to the Olympics? I think the biggest thing is, you know, work hard and don't be afraid to dream big because, and I know that sounds cliche, but I think a lot of the steps along the way, people told me, you know, you're not gonna make it, you can't do it, or, you know, you're crazy to think you can, but that strong belief in self and confidence within myself and being able to say like, you know what, I can do it and you might not think so, but I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna set my sights high um, and just continuing on that path. Well, thank you so much. It was an honor. It really was an honor to meet you. I'm so happy for you. And you said, we'll see you in Tokyo. Yes. And will we see you in 2022, though, back in the bobsleigh? So, I mean, that's still, we're figuring that out. Kaylee really wants me to come out. She's, you yeah. know, come on, come yeah. back out. So I think it'd be kind of cool, you know, South Korea, Tokyo, and Beijing. But, you know, it would be yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> so well, we'll see. Yeah. I'm going to throw my name in the mix. I want you out there, too. Awesome. So. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I'd like to give a shout out to Charisma Agency for facilitating this interview. Abracadabra, let me see more Lady K videos now. It worked. There's more magic right over there. Click it. Click it before it disappears.